Swimsuit? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Phone charger? Check. Don't forget to pack the 5 Hour Energy. It fits great in a pocket or carry on, and the alert feeling will help you arrive ready for anything. Now get 20% off when you use code 5HE TRAVEL at 5HourEnergy.com. Expires April 30th. One time use only, not valid with other discounts. Remember, visit 5HourEnergy.com and use code 5HE TRAVEL to save 20%. In 2005, two brothers hit the road to chase demons and fight monsters. Fighting a couple of angels, too. And eventually saved the world. A bunch of times. Over 15 years, this series has built one of the most dedicated fan bases in all of entertainment. And that fan base is near and dear to our hearts. That's right. I'm Rob Benedict. I played Chuck Shirley, a.k.a. God. And you do a darn good job, too, buddy. Oh, thanks. Look, I'm Richard Spade Jr. I played Loki, the trickster, and Gabriel, and I directed a bunch of episodes. Well, is that it? I directed you. I don't know. What do you think? (laughs) Though we worked on the show for years, we never sat down and watched the entire series. But that was then, and this is now. That's right. We are watching each episode and inviting the actors, the writers, producers, and crew to join us in digging into the story, the characters, and the mythology. These guests share some fantastic behind-the-scenes stories with us. You're going to love those, and you're going to get our honest opinion about each and every episode. That's right. Those guests share some fantastic behind-the-scenes stories with us, and each episode gets a full, honest, and unfettered review from Robin Rich. And you get to learn a little bit about how TV is made. Lord knows we have. A warning, there are spoilers. And don't get frustrated that we haven't cut details for multiple viewings or that we know what happens three seasons from now. This is the first time we're watching these episodes. And you're there for the ride as we watch with our our virgin eyes. (laughs) Oh, that's creepy. (laughs) Thanks for joining us on our journey as we deepen our understanding about why you love this series so much. Hey, everybody, this is Rob Benedict. And I'm Richard Spade Jr. And we're talking about Season 5, Episode 4, The End. Damn right we are. It has no title. There is no title. The End. Episode. Oh, wait. <laughs> I thought that was just a you saw, thing. And you thought we were done? <laughs> that we just started. <laughs> That's it. Uh, well, so this is a fan favorite episode. And fans of this podcast are our favorite Thank you so much for any way you support the show. We appreciate you, whether you listen or you're a Patreon member. Or you're sharing sharing, our content, man. We love it. Like when you listen to it and you like it, you send it to your buddies and say, you got to listen to this. Thank you. Or you can support our sponsors or the podcast directly on Patreon. When you support our sponsors, you support us and we appreciate it. We really do. And thanks for sharing the word and uh, getting it out there. Because there are some people that don't know. There's some people that are like, then and now, what do you mean? I didn't realize this was a podcast until earlier today when they woke me up and said, it's time to record a podcast. When they woke up and they said, this is the end. <laughs> and that's right, um, I'm being fired. Um, we really do appreciate your time, your interest, and your energy, so thank you. And now, yes. Remember how we started this whole hybrid summary discussion thing? Yes, two episodes ago? Yes, I do. Yeah, do you remember that? I do. Okay. I, I, we're going we're gonna to do that again. Great, great. It's, if, it's, if, it's, if it ain't broke... Summarize this, Robbie. Thank you, Richard. Dean is walking into a hotel room and is approached by a preacher. He doesn't think twice about it. Once in his room, he gets a phone call from Castiel, who's trying to locate him. Dean says he needs to get some sleep and that Castiel should pop by in the morning. And then Misha does a kind of a funny sort of like, all right, I'll wait. And he stands there. I will wait here. Yeah. Once sleeping, he is awakened by a call from Sam, who wants to hunt again. Dean says he believes they are better apart. He goes back to sleep. And awakens five years in the future. How many times does that happen, right? If I had a nickel. Yeah, almost none. Actually, none. None times. Due to Zachariah, he used the preacher as an informant to locate Dean. So do you see that? Did you see him slip anything onto Dean, the, the preacher? No, I thought he just made a phone call. Oh, you think that the... the, the, the I thought that guy was just a spy. Oh, okay. And so that like, he's like, uh, oh, that's Dean. And he called Zachariah. Uh, like, okay. I got him. He's in this uh, hotel. I thought he placed a lo- locator on him. So that uh, that darned preacher, he uh, he's what we would call in uh, high school, we would call that a narc. A narc, Rob, a narc. So the future is a wasteland overrun by people infected with a Croatoan virus. 
and Sarah Palin as president. Oh, that's refreshing. You were a Palin person. What what did she did she what did she do again? Who was she? Did she, was she run? She was ran as vice president, right? She was ran as vice president. Yeah. When you started studying English as a second language, uh, how many years did you get into that? For you clearly gave up. Uh, yes, she was John McCain's uh, running. Right, back. right. Um, and that went great for John McCain, by the way. Yeah, as as, as well as this is going for me. <laughs> Dean is chased by a mob of the infected, but is rescued by the National Guard, who mow them down with machine guns in a very cinematic mow down. Super cool sequence. And by the way, mob of the infected band name. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, for that sure, is obviously yeah. yeah. Something else. Yeah, or heavy metal music festival. Yes, agreed. Zachariah appears and warns Dean. Zachariah, who's like never, he's so great. He's really, I mean, Kurt Fuller's really nailed it. Kurt Fuller, dude. I mean, every time he pops on the screen, like I didn't I didn't know he's going to be in this episode or maybe I'd seen it in the credits, but whatever. Love seeing him on, on screen. Well, he's, he's, so, he's such a funny, funny man. And he's so- And dark. And, 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 and But in this, he's so evil. But don't you feel like he still has some of that Fuller-esque humor? Snark. That, like it's kind of permeates. That Fuller snark. Yeah, but even at, so like at the end of this episode, when he says to Dean, you know, enough, you know, and Dean's all being all Dean about things, and he's like, enough. All Dean about yeah, things. And yeah, you, and you just like, you believe him. It's kind of like, whoa. So Zachariah appears and warns Dean that this will be the future if he refuses to be Michael's vessel. So Dean heads to Bobby's, and the place is abandoned. He finds a recent picture of Camp Chautauqua. He heads there and discovers Baby now run down. Oh, Baby, he says. Oh, Baby. Suddenly, he is knocked out and taken prisoner by future Dean. You really made that real dirty, by the way, just uh, the way your, your interpretation He says, of, oh, oh baby. baby. Oh, Baby. Also, we also neglected to mention that uh, when he goes to Bobby's, Bobby's uh, the wheelchair is knocked over. Like, it's not good. Something, did, something unsavory happened to yeah, Bobby. Bobby didn't make it. I did think it was funny that the thing that, like... <laughs> Made him most emotional was baby. Yeah. <laughs> like he was kind of like, oh, bummer for Bobby. My car. <laughs> Once he comes to, Dean is interrogated by the future version of himself. Dean is able to convince future Dean that he is real by telling an intimate story about wearing women's underwears. Future Dean says Sam fell to Lucifer in a confrontation in Detroit. Future Dean leaves on a mission and leaves Dean handcuffed. He's able to break out with the nail he digs out of the floorboards. Like you do. Yeah. Uh, once in camp, future Chuck approaches him about what to do about some supply shortages. They're I was, uh, uh, issuing one of the uh, iconic lines uh, of Chuck's uh, well, not yet. time on the well, show. Well, not yet. Not yet. But at this point, it's just like, hey, we're, we're oh. low on this. We're low on that. Oh, oh, oh right, yeah. right. He's given this sort of stat right, right. out. Yeah. And they're interrupted by Risa. Uh, a woman from the camp. And I say I say this again yeah. to you. Yeah. Very funny uh, exchange there with Risa. Nice job. Thank you very much. And f really, for the listeners, it's the first time you're telling me that. I know, yeah. but you and I both know. <laughs> we just right, you, you told me, yeah. <laughs> In the interview. Yeah. You know, for people who are right now going, wow, Richard kind of not going into this at all. Hold on, we go into it later. Um, <laughs> so they're interrupted by Risa, they got that whole exchange. And then Dean asks future Chuck where he can find Cass. I wish you guys had called each other by, hey, future Chuck, yeah. what future Dean? Yeah. You know, know. That would have been fun. That would have been fun. So Dean finds the angel in preparation for an orgy. He no longer has his angel powers, but recognizes this Dean from a different time. Cass is practically a hippie, living for the moment and vices. I'm not sure where the word practically comes into this. I'm pretty sure he's <laughs> just a hippie, on. minus having short hair still. Yeah. He's a hippie. Yeah, he asks if he's stoned because he's laughing. And he's basically like, yes, all, all the time. Yeah. Future Dean arrives, kills a man he suspected of having the virus, and recaptures Dean. I will say that it doesn't, it calls into question Cass's true motives in life as an angel if when he loses his powers, he immediately just gets loaded and hooks up with yeah. as many chicks as he can. Well, I think like the way I always saw it is that he was just kind of like a, I don't know, one of those guru dudes you know what i mean yeah definitely one of the guru dudes i mean for sure the ultimate guru dude because he actually was an angel yeah yeah exactly so future dean has retrieved the cult he knows lucifer's whereabouts and future dean plans to kill him he begs dean to say yes to being michael's vessel future dean regrets not doing it when he had the chance future dean confesses to dean that sam said yes to lucifer and is now a vessel future dean uses some of his citizens including castiel as bait to go get lucifer the plan fails. Dean watches as future Sam, now Lucifer, uh, and, and dressed as uh, John Lennon on the album cover of Abbey Road in an all-white suit. <laughs> yep. He uh, so he 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 watches as future Sam, uh, future Sam, now Lucifer, crack future Dean's neck. So he kills future Dean. Yeah, without thinking twice about yeah. it. 
And that old uh, foot crack way that you can kill somebody. You're good at that, right? Yeah. That I, well, I started it in college. <laughs> Lucifer tells Dean they will always end up here and that he will always win. Dean vows to find a way to kill him. And he turns around and there's uh, Zach again. And boom, he's back in the motel room. I also thought that was super cool. That sort yeah. of Zachariah being there yeah. all of a sudden yeah. was really cool reveal. Totally. So he's back in the present now, and Zachariah is there, and he tells Dean he must say yes to Michael. Dean continues to refuse. Suddenly, Castiel zaps Dean out of there. Dean calls and meets Sam to reconcile, and he hands him a knife. He says, you're going to need this, and they need to create their own future. I got to say, I loved uh, uh, Jared and Jensen in that final scene. Rock solid, uh, you know, bringing the boys back together, kind of tying up that loose end. Uh, story-wise, I thought it worked really well. Yeah. I mean, I thought Dean's motivation to reach out to Sam was was genuine and heartfelt. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I agree. Um, it's nice to have them back together again. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and both of them, it just props out to the actors. You know, obviously, you know, Sam, Sam had to play it as Lucifer, and Dean acting with himself, which which Misha told us a couple episodes ago that it was a big challenge for, for Jensen to do that. Not only is it a shit ton of work, you're watching the episode, it's really easy to be on your couch. It's like, ho oh, hum, watching the episode. The, so much work goes into that. Like every time they have a setup, he's got to go change his clothes into that other flannel gear that he has. And the <laughs> yeah. subtleties between the two deans are so, it's so, well, subtle that like, it's it's not easy to play, and he and he pulls it off. It's a really challenging thing, and he, and he really pulls it off. So he does a great job, and and yes, we didn't even get into that uh, in our later conversation. The logistics of that, yeah, is really challenging. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure Jared will have a busy episode down the way, but this this episode was busy busy work for for Jensen. Busy work for Jensen, but when Jared came in, man, he delivered in a big yeah, way. He did, like he uh, did great, and uh, white suited. Uh, you know, dashing devil. Yeah. And then when he was his forlorn brother, you know, hoping to reconnect with Dean and they were brought back together, it was a cool, really were cool you, and long awaited scene. Were see. you like me? Because I wasn't sure. And I don't know if, if Jared was playing it like this on purpose, but when they meet in front of the cars and they're back in the present, I wasn't sure if he was safe or not. And he hands him the- You weren't sure if he- Oh, he you He hands you him the knife was- and it's like, uh-oh, is what if he's still Lucifer? I don't know. Honestly, I didn't have that thought. I was- I was thinking about the reconciliation between the two. So no, good, 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 good potential cat. Yeah, I, I thought, I thought, I thought that there was a chance I, he just like <laughs> stabs Dean or something. Like who, who knows? I have no idea. I, yeah. I, I was, my part in the episode was done. So I had stopped watching back in the day. So this is the first <laughs> time I'd seen the end of that episode. You're in a different room. You could just hear the dialogue. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, that was all great. So um, I'll go ahead and start. This is going to be easy for me. I'm going to give it. Well, let me, let me do the official yeah, 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 announcement. Yeah. Time for R, 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 Rob and Rich ratings. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give it a five share. No, I'm a, that's a rating joke, everybody. <laughs> um, I am going to give it easy for me. It's, it's, a, it's a 1984 Kenny Loggins. It's, a, it's one of the classic top 10 episodes of Supernatural in my book. I, just, I think Ben Edlund, as a writer, is a genius. And I think, uh, I just think, and, and the way Steve Boyum as the director really pulls it off and Jensen's acting, um, I just think it's classic. So, yeah. And well, uh, certainly if for no other reason than for historical impact, it's just one of those episodes that people talk about that's, uh, referenced a lot. First time we see Jared is Lucifer. First time we see Lucifer out, uh, who's not Pellegrino. Mm-hmm. Like we're seeing a, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a different interpretation through, through Jared Padalecki's mm-hmm. fine, fine, fine acting, Jensen's fine, fine, fine performance as two deans, mm-hmm. Misha Collins' is complete mm-hmm. 180, mm-hmm. where he's still Castiel, but but has completely changed course. Mm-hmm. And your appearance is great, and your sort of impact in the episode is great. So, yeah, you got to go, if for no other reason than for the uh, size of its footprint on the canon of the show, but also just because it's a damn good show with great writing and by Ben Edlin and great directing by Steve Boyum. Got to go with the Stapleton. Very, there you have it. Well, speaking of writer and TV legend Ben Edlin, he's with us today. You know him from Supernatural. He's also written on The Tick, Gotham, Angel, Revolution, Firefly. I mean, it, it, he, he created The Tick, created the, the. Everything he does is awesome. Yeah. So uh, let's get into our conversation with Ben Edlin.
Ben Edlund is here. Hi, Ben. How are you, buddy? Hey, I'm, I'm well. Good to see you. Yeah. So this is a fan favorite episode. What was the evolution of the concept? Was it something you pitched to Kripke? I think so. Uh, in the case of the end, well, I think, I believe it came from a node that I was fumbling around with. And that was because we were early in the season that was like heading for an apocalypse and heading for this incredible stuff. And I had this, the desire to like put a sign up in front of the haunted, the road that goes down to the haunted house that had a skull on it that said like, it's really scary down there. You don't know how scary it can get. Just some kind of like drumbeat bass note of like how heavy we were, we were intending to go. Yeah. So without giving away anything that was going to be part of the like key mechanics of the end of the season. So that was right. That was a bit of a balancing act. Right. It was really genius. And it's, it's such a great, great idea. It was genius, Rob. It was <laughs> genius. My gosh. <laughs> Finally, we get to the point of the whole thing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Of course. Yeah, no, please go on. No, <laughs> no, but it's, uh, it just, uh, just you know, a, a chance to sort of see, you know, character like Castiel sort of outside of, you know, uh, yeah, and even Dean, you know, to see the the future Dean and the sort of subtle changes that he made, you know, between Deans that way future year of two thousand fourteen. Yeah, I mean, in a sense, Dean <laughs> was the the pH test or the like. He was the strip reading the level of pain, horror, and change we were we were threatening right like and he, yeah jensen had i mean he's he's talked to me about that briefly it was how much uh, how, how difficult that was yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean he did such an amazing job yeah. he was so like he really was two people yeah and like with the same shape yeah yeah, the same two guys, yeah. two totally different guys with the same <laughs> five o'clock shadow. <laughs> but you know what's interesting about it is like th their TV uses the trope of you know two character, you know evil David Hasselhoff or whatever the hell. Like they 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 switch it off. What was interesting and challenging about this, I would imagine for you as a writer, but certainly Jensen has talked about this as an actor, is it wasn't a flight of fancy. It wasn't like I'm Dean and I'm super evil mm. Dean. It's like. It's literally two parallel universes. Like, if you open this door, this is the dean you become. If you open this door, this is the dean you become. So they both have to be grounded in whatever their past histories yeah. are. So it actually is not. I think that's what would make it the most challenging. I'm, I'm sort of guessing. Jensen's. I, I don't know if that's specifically it. But you know what I'm talking about, Rob? Like, you're not playing a heightened thing. A you're not playing thing. Yeah, demon yeah. dean, yeah. or yeah, you're playing like grounded versions yes. of the character that are the yeah. character making those choices based on the yeah. life they know. Yeah, the future Dean has just seen some shit that the past Dean hasn't seen yet, but it's it's basically the same same dude, but yeah. it's subtle. Right, but that's cool because you wrote, like, Ben, you gave him a really cool roadmap in that regard, meaning, like, I felt like when he was sitting there going, yeah, I will do this because you didn't say or I didn't say yes back in the day, you buy it. Like, you buy his the struggle he's facing in 2014 seems genuine just as the past Dean. Right. Does. Does that no, I think, I mean... It, I, I, yeah, I, I think that's true. I think as Rob, you put it, it's like, it was about the amount of experience that Dean had and he had been to the war mm -hmm. that, sorry, future Dean had an amount of experience with this thing that present Dean was fearing. And that was like a distance or a difference in character that was depicted in scar tissue, basically. Right. And 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 regret a tremendous amount of regret because the sort of the, the fulcrum of the universe had shifted or something and he couldn't call out to angels anymore. So he was he actually at least whatever this version of Dean was felt tremendous humility. Right. Uh, well, and when you look at it, it's like it's almost sort of charitable of us all, including me. I sort of see that as its own universe that has its own reality, but it's also the perfectly tuned propaganda tool from Zachariah to have, like, Dean do what he wants. It's almost on the nose. Like, come on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it yeah. works. Right, right. I will say that as the guy watching this episode for the first time, I, I didn't know Zachariah was messing with us or not. Like I, I walked away going, did Zachariah, yeah. you know how he creates these worlds yeah. and he zaps you to a world that might not work. Is Zachariah making up a false narrative just to get what he wants or is Zachariah really showing in the future? And I feel like it's in a weird way, it's kind of open-ended, which is cool. Cause you yeah. don't necessarily a hundred percent. I don't know. Cause I don't know if I believe Zachariah. I, I don't you know, know I mean? personally, like uh, based on right. 
it's not necessary at the end of that to conclude one way or the other, which I think is good. Right. I agree. That's why I thought it was like kind of, I came out of that going, I, I see Dean's going to make a decision here to call his yeah. brother, but what led him to make the decision? I don't know if that was the lie or right. the truth. Right. Regardless, he's made the decision. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it really depends on the, the supernatural physicists or metaphysicists sort of getting into the nature of what those universes are and the degree to which, for example, French mistake has a universe in it that legitimately characterizes like that's another universe that's real, a multiverse or something. We don't really know necessarily, but there are intimations, for example, that it's a wonderful life might have been more a created experience, more of a B.F. Skinner behavioral Right. Like uh, kind of like, yeah. uh, rat maze. I, I do think it balances pretty well in the middle. And that partly is because of Zachariah's desperation. Like he really, they're really up against it. And the way that Lucifer operates in the presence, Lucifer and Cass operate in the presence of the past Dean in a way that kind of encompasses this idea of like, okay, where the hell are you from? This changes things. Yeah. And or Lucifer saying, hey, I don't care where you're from. This doesn't change things. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. There's some kind of, as always sort of implied, especially I think in the first five years, that there's this like underpinning of an angelic rules. There's like a, a, there's a bylaw system where like maybe you can raise the Titanic and get a certain number of 50,000 extra souls because of a quirk in the bylaws. Mm -hmm. But you better, you know, dot your eyes or you'll get caught or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and something similar going on here where that could very well be one of the universes that is where the, the game ran and South, you right. know, like right. uh, it's hard. We don't really know. And I don't mind not knowing that one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, right. I certainly was, was watching it going, what's Chuck's is God. If Chuck is God, what, what's his relation in this? What you know what I mean? Is he yeah. just there as an observer with popcorn, going, "Oh, this is fun," or is he? You know what I mean? Is, yes. Where is he in I, this other universe? <laughs> I have I have involved uh, theories about all of it. Yeah. Whereby you know, based on the, I don't want you to be disappointed, and I might, I, I I'm probably a heretic at this point, <laughs> but I would say that Chuck is a form of God, a projection of God. You're largely, in my view. A human projection of God, yeah, and a sort of a like a, a teddy bear for humanity that doesn't know it can make teddy bears. Right. You have power of a nature. Like for me, there's a whole sublimation, sublimation of a sort of an A state of God to a B state of God, which is expressed in the material universe and people. Yes. And and that's why souls are the power because God went under into the creation. Right. Uh, by the way, a genderless, like this whole idea of a dad God is to me, it's like sort of a archangel, angel dream. Anyway, as it relates to the end, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, I think uh, the the demiurge sort of of Chuck. Uh -huh. Yeah. What was going on there? It's hard to say. Well, I mean, isn't that a perspective you can only have if you know the whole season? Right. I mean, if you know all 15 seasons, then this conversation right, becomes right. very philosophical. Sure, and sure. Like, oh, my gosh. And it really makes, it, makes it interesting. It interesting. Oh, I mean, no, I, did I, I spoil saying, stuff? Could... Am I not supposed to no, no, spoil no, no, stuff? No, not at all. We're, we're, a, we're a spoiled, <laughs> we're a spoiled <laughs> show. We're spoiled men <laughs> living in a spoiled town. No, I was saying that, like, I agree with your sort of idea, Rob, that you go, well, we have to look at this and, and think. Now, we already know, so we might as well exactly. analyze mm -hmm. what it is. Because you, know, you remember your life. You remember your life. I remember. And that's important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, we know what happens in the show in five years. And it, what's, sure. it's not this. You know what yes. I mean? So we know that it, it is a different reality. Yeah. Uh, diff uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I just think it's, it's, fu it's fun knowing what we know to so then try to project back onto it and go, oh, then what was Chuck doing there? And, you know, but... I agree with you um, in terms of the concept of Chuck as God. And, you know, I actually definitely agree with that because in my mind, Chuck was always a writer, a writer on the show. <laughs> He's you know, you know what Chuck was doing there? Probably he was depicting a failure of complete becoming. Right. You know, because right. you, you as a figure was, uh, there were, 
like you were a prophet or a, a writer. You were an insane person, right. basically. Right. Right. Like, <laughs> like you would not be able to parse reality anymore after the Winchesters visited you that first time. Right, 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 right. right. So, so, and in a sense, because how were you going to maybe like at the end of this season, and we won't get into it necessarily for the, the rapt viewer. Sure. But, but right. you, there is an important set of things that happened that probably also happened to you. Yes. That didn't necessarily happen in this Zachariah's don't go down that road. It's a haunted house. Yes. Version of the universe. Right. Right. And down that road, we could say that God was not fully realized. Right. God, God would, and, and uh, yeah, uh, had a, is it amnesis? It's the, it's the amnesia of the gods, right, incarnate right. in the in material plane. Right, you right. were suffering from that too much. <laughs> Probably gave up on yourself. Faulty <laughs> god. You know what? I, I think, Rob, I can't help but think about this now that we're talking about this. <laughs> For starters, I didn't know you were in the episode, and so when you popped in, I was like, I was like, oh wow, hey, look and, at and then I'm like, oh, this is where the this is where the toilet paper bit comes from. I get it. But it's a really funny bit, and my thing is like, you watch the scene where you go. Hi, yeah, Mandy, yeah, or whatever yeah. you know, and and she yeah. and she blows past you. Yeah, it's funny, but when you look at it from the perspective of fifteen years now, we know what uh-huh. Chuck is, and you're saying it. It's like a Clark yes. Kent moment. It's like Clark Kent going, yes. "Hi, Lois," and her <laughs> totally. blowing past. <laughs> like, <Totally. laughs> like it suddenly becomes a completely <laughs> different. That's a joke that's that a also gr- actually, works, by the way. So I so kudos to both of you guys for pulling off a, a joke. <laughs> That works in and real time, years. and then when you look back at, a, at it through actually, the lens great, of the series. Uh, metaphor for, or, or a great uh, example of what it is. It's the Clark Kent Superman moment. But uh, yeah, no, this is one of my favorite episodes. I like this version of Chuck, and I, I, I always, I was always said it's kind of he's like ra- Radar from uh, Mash. Totally. Oh, this. totally. Yeah, uh, and you played that. I felt yeah, in a way totally. without playing it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like it was great, and it was the right role for that. Yeah. Human, yes, Chuck. exactly. Yeah. Um, well, and let's talk about how, just how, what a soothsayer, what a what a fortune teller you are, because th- so much of this actually did come true. Like the the virus that takes over the world, we just went through this. You know, the hoard people yes. were people were hoarding toilet paper and stealing it from the grocery stores. And you have Sarah Palin as president. Well, we had Trump as president. Like it wasn't that far off at the time. Sarah, similar. Sarah Palin yeah. as president was ridiculous you know <laughs> there's so much about this that's this like eerily came true yeah unsettling <laughs> yeah i mean i i don't think that was much more than noodling forward a series of things that were already present sure and no great yeah it's weird but then when you give something this amount of time uh if that had happened in 2012 the mayan end of the calendar right then we'd be like oh crap this is a real problem but you give 15 years to Nostradamus and he gets writer and writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The toilet paper one is weird. Also, I it's important to note that this is all a writer's room in addition to me uh-huh. and also Cricky. Sure. Where I don't, I can't guarantee that the toilet paper wasn't Cricky. However it wound up there, it's a good, it's yeah. profound. I can guarantee Sarah Palin was me. <laughs> and I was I was wrong <laughs> about the fact that there were oil fires in the distance in America <laughs> because I, at one point there's like a Kuwaiti oil fire uh-huh. and the, like they set fire to some kind of uh-huh. <laughs> right <laughs> that didn't uh, that didn't happen. Well, give it a few years. Well, one thing one thing that I feel like has to have been Ben Edlin. Like I felt like it was I feel like it was so Ben Edlin. We might have actually just been watching young Ben Edlin. Oh. And that's hippie Castiel. Yeah. I feel that had a lot of Edlund, yeah. Ed, Edlundian sort of tones. I've to never it. taken part in an orgy. I'm just okay. I, that's fine. I'll give I, you that. I, I, but I'm looking lot, at the wood sculptures touch. behind that's you. Too much touch. Let me just say that. I mean, if you, Rob, look behind Ben. I feel like those are just props from the set from the hippie set. <laughs> Like it's all right there. The candles. Like that. And also I have this is Rex Harrison from Dr. Doolittle. I mean what says what says Orgy uh, more clearly than uh, he's he's about to bang a parrot. Uh, (laughs) It's darn right. Sorry. And that's like one of the only birds we can all talk to. I don't know what I'm doing now. I'm messing everything up. I love your I love your your I love going over to your house. It's like it's my favorite place to be. So good. It's like a museum rich if you ever get the chance. Come on over, Rich. Oh, wow. I bet. You can see my rocket ship. Yeah. That sounds bad. 
Man, I hope that's not an air I have. I anyway, have a real the, um... rocket ship. It's from, uh, <laughs> okay, it's from Russia. Okay, good. Okay, guys, hold on. We're coming right back. Hey, it's Richard Spate, and I got a question for you. Why are so many dogs suffering with health issues? Actress Katherine Heigl, who's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation, says she's seeing more issues with dogs' joints, odors, and health than ever before. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to support any dog's health. Their food. So, she decided to create something she could actually feel good about feeding her dogs. It's called Superfood Complete. Superfood Complete is made with over 30 of the healthiest ingredients on the frickin' planet, including several superfoods vital to your dog's health. And hey, all of this sounds fantastic, but the proof is in the pudding, and what I mean is, do the dogs like it? Well, I can speak for my own dog, Luna. She freaking loves it. And that's saying something, because she's no vacuum cleaner, you know? I've seen dogs eat a sofa, but not Luna. Luna is very persnickety, very high maintenance, especially when it comes to what she eats. And Luna went crazy for this food, and I'm loving what it's doing for her. She's got great energy, she looks fantastic, and I'm assuming she feels great. She usually just says, arf, but I'm going to interpret that as, you know what, Rich? Feeling pretty good. So how do you get this fantastic food for your dog? Go to badlands.com slash spntan and order right now to get up to 50% off your regular price order with a 90-day money-back guarantee. If you want your dog to experience all these incredible things, go to badlandsfood.com slash spntan today. You know how to book flights and hotels. All you're missing is a tool to plan the travel experiences you'll have once you arrive. That's why you need Viator. Book guided tours, activities, excursions, and more in one place to make your trip truly unforgettable. Viator has over 300,000 travel experiences to choose from. Everything from simple tours to extreme adventures and all the niche, interesting stuff in between. So you can plan something that everyone you're traveling with will enjoy. Real traveler reviews give the inside scoop from people who've already been on the experiences you're considering. So you can plan with confidence. Free cancellation helps you plan for the unexpected. And 24-7 customer support means you can travel worry-free. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. Find travel experiences for you. Do more with Viator. Thanks for listening, everybody. And now back to the episode. All right, two things we want to know if they were in yeah. the script or if they came about like during production. Uh, R- Route six 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 on the theater marquee. Do you know if that was like that was? Did you write that or is that a Jerry no? Wannick I think that's Wanik yeah. or potentially the grace of direction. It's uh, but it was not me. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, do you love me by the contours playing during the infected shoot down? That was that was me. Oh, great. The, um, yeah, I had a very clear image of do you love me now that i can dance and the zombies are dancing because of the bullets wow. and and we do love them now that they can dance because they're <laughs> they're now the way the zombies should be which is not around anymore right <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. so i just thought that was cool and it was also like a really jarring i love incongruous music cues to me those are some of the most powerful yes strangely like yeah how much subtext you can inject into a moment or a sequence with the right like counterintuitive sort of music with or without lyrics but especially with lyrics and especially with cultural connotation which this had you yes. know this is like this is like mainstream america rolling up to a freak party <laughs> and taking it out yeah taking it out to the top tunes of the day um i do love that juxtaposition yeah, though of what we're watching and yeah. what we're hearing you know it's kind of a very effective yeah it's such, it's such a smart cue that it's like it's it, it makes it a little more cinematic to me uh it's a cinematic yeah, cue. that's exactly right I, I love i love the way that it is edited too the way that it rings out and goes to black off dean's like 
face. Like there's, it's uh, everything about that cue was handled really well. Yeah, and then so, the, the effects are pretty. I mean, just the, everyone getting mowed down is very a little, yeah, little, little bigger, yeah. a little bigger than you know the stakes we're normally seeing on Supernatural. Usually, it's more about two because on. it's the end. Yes. because it's the end. <laughs> It's yeah, big. it's the end, Robbie. <laughs> any any significance to the where Jim Beaver ends up? Camp Ch- Chautauqua? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Huh? Don't you think they'd all end up at some camp? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're they do. Preppers. I they're do all believe preppers, that. You know, yeah, yeah. They're they're going to end up at a camp. That's just how it's going to go. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, to me, that was part of this sort of uh, interstitial period that would be more of watching the show as they failed. Uh-huh. And it would be more and more dire, and they would lose more and more shit. And then for some reason, like, they went and tried to set up a fortress or something at some other place. And then Bobby had to go back to his house to get some shit. And he got, with probably with some help, and he got tagged. Yeah. And so that was, like, just a sense of that story had continued. Right. And that, like, uh, loss after loss had been accrued. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was more about a larger story being told than specifically what Bobby was up to. Sure. And th- and then um, uh, what about like influences? Were there, did, were you at all influenced by things like 28 days later, walking dead? I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. I, I, I had not seen much of walk walking dead. Well, when did this or come even out? The c- comics. Did walking dead well, exist? The comic then? Did, right. Yeah. I hadn't, oh, I had only oh, seen right. like a very, little bit of that i appreciated the title and the fact that it was ongoing and could sense that there was something in the comic that was like oh oh, all right that makes sense yeah 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 good good job well done uh 28 (laughs) days later was very impactful yeah um you know i've seen all of the zombie stuff yeah yeah so i'd say like is it return of the living dead night of the the one where it's in the 80s where two guys slowly turn into zombies that's a really great one yeah it's like a janitor and a young guy and they get bit and then they can feel the blood pooling in their asses when they're sitting down they go like this i don't feel right (laughs) (laughs) i don't know oh it's great it's uh i think it's return yeah return it's not dawn dawn has butt it's ret- who's that great i think it's bud the zombie who gets the walkman on and starts to grab at music because it's so like <laughs> right. i mean there's such beautiful fuck like things going on yeah anyway so i was prepared let's just say right yeah yeah and and also that was another thing was like we wanted to create an end that was made entirely of supernatural stuff so bringing croatoan in again it, it as much as there was a shape forming for the end game i think that this returned us to some core principles of supernatural lore including croatoan and the cult mm. and it brought those back in which i think was healthy when you think in terms of the shape of a story because those are very powerful things right. to be introduced into a five-part epic and then have just not go anywhere right but instead they came and and returned and you go oh this is makes sense this is why one of their early agendas was get the croatoan right because we're going to need it, you know? Like, those things to me are the, like, that's when you're really optimally, operating optimally, when you're world building, and you're like, you've got that stuff, and everyone is in sync, and including production and design and uh, and conception, Mm -hmm. where we really were, I think, all in a kind of a, a pretty good headspace to be able to do some really good, good storytelling. Yeah. So, yay. When was the first time that they started talking about Croatoan? When did that get introduced into the show? I think it was season two. Season two. Aha. And I remember because you and I couldn't pronounce oh, the right. word, Rob. Croatoan. We were like, ah. Roanoke. Yeah. So th- this may be the first episode we could really get a sense of how deep Castiel's commitment is to Dean. Do you, yeah. Do you recall discussing that in the writer's room? Or did that come about organically? Or Let's see, where were we at that point? I think, yeah, I mean, at the beginning of the episode, he's, you know, he's on the phone, he's going to wait. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, at that point, they had been through quite a bit. Yeah. And so we had gone through a lot. Like, it was already sort of developing that from the moment that Cass raised Dean, and kind of just moments that sort of happened in season four, that's something that just felt like it was there. It, there was a, I feel like this might be a Chinese cultural tradition, uh, or I'm just... 
a bad person. No. <laughs> anyway. Those could be simultaneously yes, true. Let's go with Just, that. Uh, That's fine. I'll go with that. Yeah. Uh, but like uh, the notion of saving someone's life and in saving someone's life, you are responsible for that person's life from that point forward because you, you've sort of become almost paternal or maternal in that regard. And that Cass had that initial relationship and then they really did develop just a bond. Yeah. I enjoyed, uh, I feel like it was in season, early in season five, I guess, right? No, early in season six, there was a scene, uh, which doesn't give much away, but Cass has been away for a while. Sam has been trying to summon him and uh, no dice, but then Dean, like for like a year or something. And then Dean says, uh, all right, fine, Cass, are you here? And Cass appears immediately. <laughs> and he's like, Sam's all upset. And then like Cass goes, Dean and I do share a deeper bond. <laughs> oh, that's we just like yeah. say it, which I enjoy. Wow. You know, I love the the hippie part of Castiel so much. I mean, <laughs> it's it's hilarious at the same time that it's 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 fascinating and that you're that that's the that's where Castiel goes. One of the things I thought was interesting, and this is before the question that's written down here, but I wondered if Castiel becomes human, how does he not revert back to being Jimmy? He becomes mortal. So he's still Castiel, just without angel powers. Yeah, like he's he's essentially this hybrid of a human substrate whose soul technically is in some kind of liminal space, right? Or in the back of the brain. I, that, right. that essentially that freakish thing, He Castiel has been a freak his whole existence and like a kind of a, a broken angel in some way that was intended. And it's like uh, there's a sort of a hair in the gate that was put there for some reason and it seems like the hair in the gate is like a foiling mechanism for the corrupt ambitions of all of these the archangels and stuff like the one who keeps messing it up and keeps coming back with this stubbornness that defies a story it really did like the here's a miracle that we are permitted to do this we just kept bringing Cass back and everybody was like cool we like Cass." <laughs> No one right, was like, right, how right. does this work? Why is this allowed? Right? It actually breaks the uh, the coherence of life and death. But to me, it makes a certain sense. In the same way that moving forward through 15 seasons, one could say it just passes beyond credibility or something. But to me, it passes into an epic like Gilgamesh. Like, like, like it passes into yeah. a thing where, of course, you can throw Sam or Dean 30 feet into a concrete pillar and they'll, that's and right. just like oh, i hated that like um because yeah. they have lapsed into demigod them godhood through all of these crazy adventures and trials and purifications and going to hell uh numerous times and dying and coming back and it, it is a process that they went through of becoming and anyway so oh what how did we start there was a hippie cast i liked that too yeah well, I think the fact that that's an interesting way of talking about it—that it's not that he's human; it's that he's mortal. That's a different. Yes. That's oh, a different. Yeah, sort of, yeah, and 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 he was com that was his complaint, which was fun, you know, like his sprained foot or whatever, or right, like right. just having a cold or right. something. Yeah. Like, um, but to me, I think an angel trapped in a human, there would be a good chance that he would be pre enlightened or be a pretty hippie cat. Yeah, and mostly what he's talking about is oneness. So, like, you know, yeah, which is a right. great come on. No, I don't know if it is. I've never. <laughs> <laughs> or so you've read. Chicks um, and the gurus. Speaking of come ons, Rob, I'm just looking yeah. at this note. Was that the the joke we already talked yeah, about? I added the high Asa. Was that, that was improv? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's a really funny bit. Yeah. Good work. Uh, yeah. I'm just now discovering that as we as we wind yeah. through the questions here. That's cool. <laughs> I, uh. Well, did you, let me ask you this, Rob. Did you add that like while shooting, or did you ask Steve in advance? Did you go, "Hey, Steve, can I throw this that, line in?" I don't or did remember. you just do it? I just remember it was just one of those things. Where there was a, a little second there I could say something, and I was like, "Hi, Risa," you know. And, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, that was cool. Yeah. You know, but that's like you were you were inside. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, you were you were at the camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. With all your fun, your there. your happy campers. Yeah, you were I was involved, which in is the great camp drama. Yeah. I like that. That was really cool. <laughs> exactly. The reality of it. Exactly. Um, yeah, you know, to be honest, I, yeah, I'd forgotten about that whole bit. But I had I had a lot of fun shooting this episode. I just remember, I don't know, there's something. Did it, they did they make you sleep there at the camp? Was that no, a they drove had? us up there. It was uh, on the side of a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> How far away was it, Rob? Was it like a, yeah, it was a, a hall? hall? I mean, it was like an hour drive up the mountain. 
Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. Um, right at the edge of the circle, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that whole that whole town. So, Rob, did you ever see, you know, that that set where where the song is playing and the demons are, yeah. you know, yeah, I never saw doing that. that bad and the little girl yeah. attacks Dean. Uh-uh. Did you ever see that? It's a really crazy oh, cool it's set. Amazing. It almost feels like a back yeah. lot, but I, mean, I don't know. If it it was. was. It was a back lot made for, I forget, it was made for a The Watchmen. Yes. It was a city uh, street from The Watchmen, and it was so useful. Wow! To have like it was also it looks so like it, production value was through incredible. The roof. Like as soon as they boomed up and showed yeah. that, I'm like, yes, Whoa, yeah, that's and, cool. and uh, that one, and also it it was used to great effect in the. Uh, uh, I think I was there for some reason. Is that true? Sometimes I just have dreams, but I think I was there um, uh, when they were shooting the death. Uh, entrance. I was there. Oh, wow. So, like, uh, they used that same city street when they had that beautiful car pull up and then Death gets out and Julian. he's walking it to oh, that Oh, yeah. That's one of Richard's favorite moments. It's oh, it's yeah. a gorgeous, like, that's an iconic. Yeah. Across, yeah. across genre, I think that's an iconic moment, 100%. you know? 100% it is. Show it. Don't tell it. You know, Steve Boyum, legendary uh, yes. director and like, you know, chiseled from rock. Major, man. major no emotion, contributor. Just major a, contributor. A wall of granite. But he is quoted as saying that this is probably his favorite episode of television that he will ever wow. do. Wow. So that's a high praise from Steve Boyum for you. Oh, that's friend. nice. He's a great yeah. guy. We've spoken at various functions. Yeah. Uh, he's so yeah. great. Yeah. I love that yeah. guy. He's like up there with my Phil Zagrishas and Bob Singers. He's just sort of like the statesman of the of the of the genre of director. Yeah. You know, it's and certainly so like uh, in the in the firmament of supernatural, uh, for sure. But it's cool that indeed, that, indeed. That, that that's a very cool thing yeah. to have said. I would be super proud as a director of the work that had been like that's it, the writing's great, but like I mean the writing's whatever. Uh, the writing is great. The writing is great. It's a great no, episode. The, you can say that. The writing works, but the you know it it really is a beautifully directed and realized thing. Yeah. Which like it yeah. wanted to be. It would have really failed if that's like it's got breathtaking sweep, especially if you have any inkling of what TV should be presenting you yes. on a weekly basis. Then you're like, well, what was that? Yeah. A hundred percent. I'm dude. That's a really well stated point that we make all the time which is that whenever you you look at supernatural especially the earlier seasons you really do yourself a favor to go back and watch what else was on tv at the yeah. time yes. <laughs> to see what this yeah. show was accomplishing it was so far exceeded this wasn't the game of thrones era this wasn't the the streamer era of television no. this was still network tv and they were delivering on a ridiculous yeah. level yeah. And, and everything we've talked about on this show about this particular episode is yes how great the nuanced writing is but also how grand it is how cinematic we use the term yeah. cinematic and you know large in scope and you know that's not terms you use in Especially network the television CW. we're like no yeah they did eight days and then the next day they start the next yeah. one like, it, it, what they accomplished was just yeah. astonishing well ben edlin thank you so much for joining us and talking about this classic Dude, episode always a treat to have uh, you it's you've, fun you've written some of the best episodes of this show uh, it's just uh that's just a fact Stop. I thought it was an elevated episode of TV, and now I feel like it's even more elevated hearing your perspective on it, man. So thank you. Great. That was my mission. I wanted to further <laughs> elevate some aspect of my previous work. Allow me to do well, it again. I'll come back and do it again at please, another time. Please do. Thanks, buddy. This is Jared Padalecki stopping in to say hi and let you know that we've got to take a quick break. Looks like you need a vacation. Enter the five-hour energy Where Will the Tide Take You sweepstakes. You could win a $10,000 dream beach vacation. Imagine jet setting off to a tropical paradise, having fun in the sun, or diving at a gorgeous reef. It's up to you. No purchase necessary. Go to 5hetide.com for official rules and to enter. That's 5hetide.com. Enter today. Ends June 30th, 2024. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? 
Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. Thank you for supporting Supernatural then and now. And now, back to the show. Well, that was great. It's great to talk to uh, the genius. I'll say it. I'll say it again. The genius that is Ben Edlund. (laughs) The mad scientist that is Ben Edlund. Yeah. Yeah. Always great to talk to him. And you know, he lives in our neighborhood, Richard. I mean, not far from us. Yeah. That's, uh, he makes him even better. Yeah. Just a great dude, man. Such a nice guy. Really, uh, really good guy. So clever. I mean, his brain works in such yeah. uh, exotic ways. Yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. Well, that won't be the last time we talk to him. Nope. But now, well, now we'd like to talk to you a little bit about the mythology of this episode. Mythology. Mythology. So, uh, Richard, talk to me about Lucifer's fall from grace. Well, you see, Lucifer was given high rank, beauty, and wisdom amongst the angels. He was even called the guardian cherub. Oh. There isn't mention in the Torah and Old Testament of Lucifer being jealous of man. Huh. His fall from grace was caused by him being overly prideful in himself. Oh. He felt his position warranted he be worshipped, and he needn't worship God. Oh, that's interesting. I'd never really heard that before. So basically, yeah. Lucifer is full of himself. Yeah, he got a bit of a toot. He's a, he's a hottie. Turns out. <laughs> yeah, you know, kind of uh, up in his tower, looking huh. down on the rest of us. Wow. And, you know, if memory serves, from the book of Ezekiel, uh-huh. God said, Oh, guardian cherub, from among the fiery... Why am I saying this? You're God. Uh, you say it. Oh, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones, your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to earth. As, uh, you're welcome. Wow, it's intense. Yeah that's, yeah, that's exactly how I played uh, God on the show, by the way. That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it really sounded yeah, exactly, exactly like the voice like, on the show. Well, yeah. you know what happens then? Okay, so Lucifer, he's cast to he's hell. Cast, he, he's, he's thrown. Well, the weird thing is that Bible verse says he th- I threw you to earth, but then he actually ends up in hell. Okay. They kind of, they kind of skip that little All step right. there, but whatever. Right. However, however, they got Flea to play bass on this track, uh-huh. they, they, it happened. Okay. And now, when Lucifer was cast to hell, he takes a third of the angels with him. A third of the angels with him. Yep. Oh, I I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that said one of three. <laughs> he took well, one of three angels with him. There's only there's only three angels. Or, uh, well, that would still be a third. <laughs> you know, look at it that way. That's true. Lucifer's name before his fall from grace. People don't know this. Carl. Oh. Wow. Oh, yeah. Huh. But there was a, the alternate version was mm. Samael, ah. which is S A M A E L. But maybe not depending on your interpretation of ancient texts. I don't know, Robbie, how you interpret the ancient texts. Maybe yours is a different name, but the ancient text I'm currently using it's Samael. Well, interesting that the you know we're talking about in episode three about uh, Lucifer, or and in this episode, Lucifer, uh, you know, taking on Sam as a meat suit. Yep. And now you're telling me. That Samael was a Lucifer name of Lucifer. Yep. Is that not oh, weird to you? Full circle, man. Yeah. Full circle. Crazy. Full creepy circle. Wow. Well, I need to start having some fun to wash that off. I'll tell you what. I got just what the doctor ordered. A rucksack full of fun bags, fun bags, fun bags. The title of the episode comes from The End, the final song on The Doors' self-titled album. The song appears in the film Apocalypse Now, in which director Steve Boyum perform stunts. That's an awesome piece of uh, Hollywood trivia there. I will say, not to pee on the fire of the fun fact here, but the title of the episode, which is the end, could come from any Anything. book or movie ever produced. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Since they all, How, at some point, say the end. However, this is Supernatural, where you name a lot of episodes after songs. 
Good point. From the 70s, 60s and 70s. Uh, the marquee on the movie theater reads Route 666. Right. Do you say route or route? I think I say route. I heard you say that. And I'm like, maybe I'm saying it wrong, but I've always said route, but it must be route. I think, it's, I think it's either rich. I think if you look it up, either are acceptable. No, I'm a bad man. No, no, Rich, it's not you. Hey, be- anyway, before we move the on, to- he does read that. Wait, m- before we move on to Apocalypse Now, there's another Apocalypse Now supernatural relation. Do you remember what that was? Tom Wright. That's right. Tom Wright, who directed uh, episodes of Supernatural starting in season nine all the way through season 15, uh, was uh, a camera operator on Apocalypse Now. And shot the scene. The surf footage in which Steve Boyum is a stunt player. Right, but I thought he also shot the uh, the helicopter sequence when this song that, is playing. That's what I'm talking about. That's the the helicopter sequence and Robert Duvall coming down on the beach. Yeah, that's all part of the same. Right, sequence. right. You're right. Right. You're right. Oh, you said surf. Yeah, they surf. Remember? I get out there, surf. Charlie doesn't surf. Oh, the right. whole sequence where, where Robert Duvall makes the guys surf. I love a smell smell of napalm in the morning. That I love the smell of napalm. Yeah, that whole sequence. Wow. Okay. So the marquee on the movie theater reads Route Route 666, and this is the beloved episode, Route Route 666 from season from uh, season one. Yep. There is yeah. the in-world novel, uh-huh. Route 666, written by Carver Edlund. Correct. And in season two, Hollywood Babylon, there's a movie poster for Route 666. And in 2001, Stephen Williams, who plays Rufus, starred in a movie with Lou Diamond Phillips called... Route 666. Wow. Wow. It's the set for the 2014 apocalyptic future was the set from the movie Watchmen. That's the Zack Snyder version. Yeah. Because they made the series years later. This is the Zack Snyder that is, feature. That is Watchmen. correct. The series, really great, by the way. Yeah, the series is unbelievable. I, I, I always heard that they made that set for the Watchmen, and it, I guess Supernatural used it, probably a couple, a couple of other shows. Uh-huh. But it was an exterior town that really wasn't built to withstand the weather, so it hasn't held up well, ah. from my understanding. Huh. Well, isn't that the point of it, though? But even as a set? No, n- not even in that <laughs> right, right, right. fun, apocalyptic kind of right, way. Right, like, right. More like, a, oops, we use paper mache in the <laughs> rain kind <laughs> right, of way. Right, 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 The final scene is set in the same location at which Dean and Sam part with John in season one, episode 21, entitled Salvation. Oh, interesting. Mm. That is fun. In the scenes with future Dean and present Dean, Jensen performed with his stunt double, Todd Scott. Wow, oh, that makes sense. There you go. The set dressers mucked baby up so much it was unrecognizable. The visual effects team had to restore it in post. What? I'm sure they love that. <laughs> Great. Thanks, guys. We'll spend a little money digitally cleaning up <laughs> Un- the car. Undoing what you did. Yeah. I'm sure neither, neither department loved that. Correct. So uh, Serge, our uh, DP, director of photography, who's uh, also a genius, he lit the two deans differently. Future dean was darker then Dean Dean. That makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Good work, Serge. La douceur. DP extraordinaire. We. Oui. Um, yeah, uh, that's uh that's an amazing again, you know, this show does things details that other shows only dream of. They dream of details. Supernatural executes details. It really does. Um, it's really, really great stuff. That's why I think this sets us apart. I mean, when do you have a DP? That does that does that kind of specific deep detail. It's rare. I'll answer for you. Never. Um, all right, fantastic. Well, good job, everybody. Great episode, man. Great podcast episode and great episode of television yeah. to review and talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I guess we'll see you on the next one. I certainly hope so. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I can guarantee. I can guarantee we'll be back for another one, and we'll see you then. This episode of Supernatural features Jared Padalecki as Sam Winchester, Jensen Ackles as Dean Winchester, and Misha Collins as Castiel. Guest stars include Rob Benedict. Woohoo! Kurt Fuller. Yay! Lexa Doig. All right. Dwayne Bryson. Way to go, Dwayne! And Michael Johnson. Big Mike in the house. The End was written by Ben Edlund and directed by Steve Boyum. Editing by Anthony Pinker. Music by Jay Greska. Executive produced by Eric Kripke and Robert Singer. The episode originally aired on October 1st, 2009. This episode of Supernatural Then and Now was hosted and executive produced by Richard Spade Jr. and Rob Benedict. Produced by Stephen Hine, written by Stephen Hine and Hayda Holscher. And edited and associate produced by Trey Booty. <laughs> Music provided by Tim Wynn. The episode was recorded with the help of Sonic Fuel Studios. This podcast is from Story Mill Media. Follow the podcast on Instagram and TikTok on SPN Then and Now. 
Become a member of the podcast at patreon.com slash SPN then and now. You can spray it. You can definitely spray it. That's not a problem. You can show it and spray it. I'd prefer you say it, but you if you must, you may no, spray you, it. No, you can't say yeah. it. You can't say it. But you could show it and spray it, show it and spray in it. a number of different yeah. ways, which we have done on Supernatural many times. The old show. Spr- yeah. spray. Man, if I had a nickel for every time I had to watch Rob show it oh, and spray geez. it. The old show and spray. Show and spray? Come on. That's somebody's title. Give the old show and spray, oh, Robbie. Your next episode of show and spray. It's going to be oh, fabulous. Man. We've been canceled, obviously. So thank you for yeah. being here for our last I'm episode. I'm glad I could be here for your last episode. Now. That gives me legendary <laughs> status. I also don't know, like, I, I feel like it's a weird question, right. so I skipped it. But well, dive in. There's just, he put a lot of work into it. So Castiel. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. Of, and yeah. to wrap it all up, okay, Rufus did a little something that goes like this. Tell me something good. <laughs> Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me that you love me. Yeah. 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 Which had nothing to do with. Yeah. Okay. That's nothing to do with, uh, well, anything we're talking about. But yeah, that's Rufus and Shaka Khan. Well, between elevating uh, this this conversation and introducing us to the phrase "the old show and spray," I think <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna go down. You guys the give him the old show and spray. <laughs> Guest stars include Rob Benedict, hey. Kurt Fuller. Oh, what? Huh? Who? Me? <laughs> Are you sound affecting yeah. the names? Okay, yeah. I'll start. I'll I, then I'll keep going. Story Bell Media. Support for this podcast and the following message come from Coriant. Coriant provides wealth management services centered around you. They focus on exceeding your expectations and simplifying your life. Coriant has been helping high achievers just like you enjoy their lives more fully, preserve their wealth, and provide for the people, causes, and communities they care about. As one of the largest integrated fee-only registered investment advisors in the U.S., Coriant has deeply experienced teams in 23 strategic locations. Coriant has extensive knowledge spanning the full spectrum of plan investing, lending, and money management disciplines. Leverage Coriant's exclusive network of experts to craft custom solutions designed to help you reach your financial goals, no matter how complex they may be. Real wealth requires real solutions. For more information, connect with a wealth advisor today at Coriant.com. That's C-O-R-I-E-N-T.com. Coriant.com. Swimsuit? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Phone charger? Check. Don't forget to pack the 5 Hour Energy. It fits great in a pocket or carry on, and the alert feeling will help you arrive ready for anything. Now get 20% off when you use code 5HE Travel at 5HourEnergy.com. Expires April 30th. One time use only, not valid with other discounts. Remember, visit 5HourEnergy.com and use code 5HE Travel to save 20%.